Stop telling people to start on smaller bikes. Just stop because you sound dumb half the time and don't know what you're talking about the other half. What's going on? What's going strong? What's going wrong? It is I. It's the chef. Cooking up another one. This one's a little ranty rant. Just want to tell you a little bit about why I keep telling everybody to stop telling rookies, beginners. Can you move, please? Man. To stop telling, rook, like, stop telling rookies and beginners that the best bikes are lower in CC, right? Smaller engines mean that you'll be safer. That is not true. And, and you should be ashamed of yourself for saying that. Uh, Adobo Moto talked about this already, but I'm gonna talk about it too, because this is something that I'm passionate about. I'm not going to tell somebody who's 6'3 to jump on a 400, because if you're 5'2, you have no idea how uncomfortable a, 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 a 650 is. A 650cc Kawasaki Ninja is a small bike to somebody my size. Now, if you add in the fact that my knee is messed up and my ankle is messed up, both on the left side, that's very uncomfortable. So I bought a 650. That was the bike I started out on. And it wasn't the 650's fault that I had crashed. It was my fault. I didn't respect bikes at that time. I thought, hey, I drive stick and I have my license. I'll be fine. That's not how this works. There was seen, oh, Lord. Uh, it's been seen that there is no correlation. The National Highway Safety Board has shown there is no correlation between engine size and fatalities or accidents on the road. If you don't believe me, go look up National Highway Safety Board. Is it National Highway Safety Patrol? Anyway, just type in USA National Highway Safety and then motorcycle fatalities. You'll know. And by the way, I, the Adobo Moto talked about this, so you can just go on his page. He has a short about it. So um, I'm just ranting at this point. But there's no correlation between engine size or otherwise. Now, mind you, am I, am I using, do, will I allow you to use this video as justification to tell your mom, 16 year old, 17 year old, 18 year old, 19 year old, that you need to get a ZX14R because your favorite content creator has one and he said that big bikes are not a problem. No, no, no. That's a very dumb way to look at this. If you wanna be on a sport bike and you are 6'3", I'm gonna tell you just like I told King Zeke, you in for a rude awakening <laughs> because I haven't found a bike that is as comfortable for my body type. Forget on the road or anything like that. That's as comfortable as my ZX14R. It's just, you know, I sat on a 1000. The 1000 actually felt like my ZX, uh, I'm sorry, ZX. Uh, the 1000 felt like my 650. Like it felt the same. My rider triangle was the same. Um, adjustable rear sets on the 1000 would allow me to do stuff. There were no adjustable rear sets for the 650 I had, so I didn't even have a choice to keep the Dagon thing. Like it would hurt after like I think 25 minutes or so. You know, my, my ZX14R feels good even after an hour 10 driving or riding. So it's not about the size of the bike. It's about you respecting it and spending the time necessary in parking lots, spending the time necessary in your classes right? Because you should be taking classes. First of all, if you're in the U.S., you have this amazing, I'm going to call it a tool, even though it's really more of a school and it's literally a school, the MSF, right? Motorcycle Safety Foundation. That is a, a class and course and a system of classes, actually, uh, dedicated to helping you become a better motorcyclist, right? Safer on the road and better, more knowledgeable. The best part about it is, and this is why I t this is what I tell every single person that says they want to learn how to ride in the United States. You can get your license there without needing to take a road test at the DMV. Now, you're still taking a road test, but this is a road test after multiple days of working through the progressions. Wait, is that? Oh, that's a uh, right through the tunnel. Oh, yeah. No, we're not. We're not even trying that. Um, but that's multiple days after you've worked through the progressions of learning and growing uh, through classroom training, which is training your brain to understand how to do the stuff and the things. Then actually on like a Honda Rebel or um, a Street Fighter, you get to feel what it's like to be on a motorcycle because you're on a motorcycle. And then you learn the things like emergency braking, um, how to brake on in a regular situation, how to roll on and off the throttle, what clutch control is. These are all important things. And hey, if you drop one of their bikes, it's fine. They'll be all right. Like, trust me, they'll be fine. I dropped one of their bikes. 
And it wasn't because, uh, oh, the bike was too heavy. My bike weighs more than all of their bikes, okay? But it wasn't because the bike was too heavy. It was because I didn't, I didn't brake right. <laughs> um, what I will say is, yeah, I'm going this way. This is why I hate going to the Lincoln because there's always some sort of foolishness. Um, but what I want you to understand is, oh no, oh no. Yes, hurry up and go. Um, what I want you to understand is the size of the bike doesn't mean anything. You know, the MSF course will teach you how to manage a bike. Sorry. Uh, it will teach you how to manage a bike, how to do the things that you need to do. Mind you, I'm always going to say the first bike that you jump on should be a weight that you feel comfortable with, right? So Kawasaki released a new bike, the Kawasaki 500. That thing weighs just slightly more than the 400, but it has an engine that's tuned for more power. In my mind, oh, that's a win for a beginner because now we can stop talking about is the 400 too, um, too much of a beginner bike? Because I think that in New York City, 400 is perfect. 400 is perfect. But at a certain point, you may want to hit some highway riding. You might want to stick around with some other people. Maybe you want a bigger bike and the next size up was 650, which weighs, um, I'd say a considerable amount more at 423, 423 pounds versus 377, which is the Kawasaki 500 and 366.1. Why I remember these numbers, I don't know, but 366 pounds for the 400. So it's a considerable jump from 366 to 423. That You will feel that, you will. Um, and it's not about you lifting it up, it's about you moving the thing around and not moving around at speed because when you start moving the bike, guess what? The bikes become weightless. So I just wanted to throw this out there and say, I want people to stop telling folks that they need to get a smaller engine bike because if you don't want a sport bike, guess what? Some of the bikes that you would want might be 750, but they're not unforgiving like a sport bike or a super sport bike would be. But you won't know about any of that stuff until you actually start riding these different things. You know, uh, people talk about my bike as a, um, ha it has a, a less twitchy, but still pretty twitchy throttle because it's a sport bike or a super sport rather. Okay, I don't have a problem with it. And when I ride my boys, um, uh, 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 what bike does he have? Oh my God, the Ducati Scrambler. When I ride the Ducati Scrambler, I don't have a singular problem with his, his throttle at all. Like, I love it, you know? I can almost give it full beans and, and uh, you know, let the clutch out a little bit and still feel good. <laughs> all right, let's bring this to a close. I am the chef boy and you just got the recipe. Stick around for some more motorcycle and um, car content. Uh, much love. And again, you just got the recipe. Where am I going? Oh, okay. Haha. All right, y'all gonna hang out with me for a bit because uh, I'm just gonna make this here turn.